Yo, what is up everyone? My name is Vulpin, and today I want to go over the revealed cards for Duelist's upcoming expansion entitled Ancient Bonds. Uh, I just kind of want to go over my reactions to the cards. Um, obviously not a top tier player or able to get to S rank, um, mainly just because I don't have enough time to play, I think. I think if I had the time to dedicate to playing a lot of games every day, I would make it there. Um, anyways, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't think what I'm saying here is going to define how the card is actually going to be played in the game. Um, the card could obviously end up being a lot better or a lot worse than I'm judging here. Uh, more fun to play, less fun to play, etc. Um, yeah, so I just want to kind of go through each of the cards that have been revealed so far. I think at this point they've uh, revealed all of the cards that they're going to uh, before the expansion actually releases. Uh, so I just kind of want to go through each of the cards, wreck my brain, uh, give my thoughts, and uh, yeah, just kind of get myself and anybody watching this video pumped for the expansion, which is supposed to be coming out sometime this week, um, or this upcoming week. And so I'm super excited, can't wait to play it, and uh, yeah. Anyways, let's just jump into the cards here. I'm pretty sure I have these in the order that they were uh, revealed. Um, and so let's just go ahead and jump in with the first one, which is a 7 mana legendary um, Lion Arminion named Peacekeeper. It's got 5 attack, 5 defense. It has airdrop, force field, frenzy, provoke, and celerity. Um, talk about a target for dispel, right? I mean, if this is able to stick and you're not, your opponent's not able to deal with it, it can, uh, it can, it can do some damage very, very quick. I mean, if anything, you would just, either you're going to go all out with it and, like, break the force field and hit something with low attack so that you can get the frenzy and the celerity off, or you'll just attack once, uh, ignoring the celerity, keeping the force field up, um, making sure that you leave, uh, the provoke up, um, Airdrop obviously gives you options to put it wherever you want on the board, wherever you need it. Um, seven mana is pretty high, and uh, obviously the stats are pretty low for the abilities that it has. Um, I think this could be a very fun card. I don't, I don't really see see it being, um, you know, thrown into every deck. Um, if so, if we do happen to see it, we're, we're going to see a lot more dispel, a lot more ephemeral shrouds, uh, people holding on to ways to be able to answer this. I, live, I think it looks like a really fun card. I'll definitely throw it into some decks um, and try it out, um, but I don't think it's gonna it's gonna be like a staple in Lionar decks. Next we have Blood of Air. Uh, this is a Vitruvian spell for five mana, and it allows you to transform an enemy minion into a friendly wind dervish. Um, so this is a little bit more. Uh, I mean, it's obviously like a control spell, uh, a little bit more expensive than Entropic Decay, uh, less expensive than Dominate Will. I think it's right where it needs to be. Uh, Entropic Decay obviously just destroys your opponent's minion. This destroys it and gives you a Wind Dervish on top of it for one mana, so uh, I think people will probably run this instead of Entropic Decay, unless their five mana slot is already pretty full. Um, I think it seems like a pretty solid card. It just gives another option, like Entropic Decay or Dominant Will, so it kind of fits into that theme. Um, yeah, I don't know that I'll play it, but I think um, I think it's a pretty decent card. Next, we have Ghoulie, a three mana, three four neutral, um, with the text "This minion is from every tribe," and I think uh, I think that I'm not able to think about this in its full. Expanse. Um, what am I trying to say here? I don't think that I'm able to fully justify how good or bad it's going to be because it's going to be from every tribe. Uh, I'm running a <laughs> a Kara Vesper deck right now, kind of getting ready for the theme of uh, using tribes like the Golems and uh, Arcanists. Um, and so Ghoulie could obviously fit in there. It could uh, use the benefits like giving a Vesper. Uh, celerity if you're using Holdra um, I mean if you're using uh, glacial elemental you can summon this and get that to proc um, and so I think I think this is a decent statted minion in a three drop spot that will fit into any kind of deck that's using a tribed theme uh, I think it's it's pretty solid I mean, I'll definitely try it out. I don't know that it's going to stick around in those type of decks, but it has so much flexibility being 
from every single tribe that uh, if you need a pretty decent three drop um, this could uh, definitely fit that spot I just realized I'm looking at all the cards uh, over here to my right I think your left so I don't know how much that matters but I'm gonna be looking over here uh, for the majority of this video anyways um, yeah let's get on to the next one here this is Lava Slasher. This is one of the ones that when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, this card is going to be insane. This gives Magmar just like another amazing tool, especially at five mana, uh, like right before a Macantor turn. Oh, I think I'm going to be playing a lot of Magmar after <laughs> Ancient Bonds comes out. Anyways, this is a five mana uh, Golem with four attack, nine defense, opening Gambit. Uh, this minion fights a nearby enemy. And uh, how I believe this works is kind of like uh, Dancing Blades, except for only attacking what's in front of you. You're going to be able to choose a minion that's nearby, so any of the surrounding uh, six, seven, eight tiles. Um, and it says enemy minion, so not your opponent's general, uh, but any of their minions. Uh, so I think this is going to be an incredible card. I think this is going to show up in tons and tons of Magmar decks. It, uh,. It's pretty good. I'm excited to play this card. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> I don't think it gets much better than that. Uh, next, we have the Songhai Artifact Bangle, or Bangle Bangle of Blinding Strike for three mana. Uh, gives your general celerity. So I think um, this is actually going to work out very well for either of the generals. Um, with Riva, it's just going to allow her to kite you around the board way more than she already is able to. And uh, with Kalios, it's going to be able to to allow him, if you're playing like a backstep deck, uh, it's going to allow him to position a lot better um, to put minions and stuff behind you. Mm, I don't think it's going to show up in every type of deck, um, but I think it's, it's definitely going to be very useful. And it's, I mean, this is... Another reason I think Blood Tear is going to stick around, just an easy way to ping off the durability of the artifact. Um, I'm going to let you know now, I'm not I'm not a big fan of Songhai, and so I'm not going to be super excited about these Songhai cards. Um, yeah, definitely look for a uh, Songhai main to tell you um, how good or bad these are going to be. This is just based off of how I expect my opponents to play with it, right? So, I need to start playing more Songhai. It's 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 been a long time. I started off trying to play them, wasn't very good, and decided, yeah, I'm gonna stick with uh, the other factions that I'm better with. I've gotten better with the remaining five, and so I just need to go back and start playing Songhai now. Anyways, let's move on to the next card. This is a two mana, two attack, two defense uh, Arcanist. I believe this is Abyssian uh, called Nocturne. With the text, whenever you make Shadow Creep or Wraithling, instead make both. Uh, this, I think this is a really good card. Like, I can easily see this. Um, I could easily see playing this in a Creep deck, a Cassie Creep deck. Not only, I mean, whenever you create a Shadow Creep, you're going to get a Wraithling on the board, right? If you have, <coughs> I mean like a, a shadow sister you can I mean just create a bunch of wraithlings send them out heal yourself up plus you're generating creep for the end game uh, and same thing with yeah I think uh, with Lilith you're gonna do the same thing you're still gonna play um, like your zoo or your <clears throat> just like wraithling based decks and then throw you know, a couple of uh, Shadow Creep ending cards in there. It's only 2-2, not the best of stats, but I think uh, the text makes up for it. I think it's definitely going to be tested a lot. We'll see how well it actually does. Uh, next up, we have Blue Conjurer. This is a neutral Arcanist for 5 mana with 4 attacks, 6 defense. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, put a random Arcan Arcanist into your action bar. Uh, I actually see this being played um, in like a Songhai Arcanist deck. Uh, you're obviously going to be casting a lot of spells. Um, Songhai, I mean, is is well known for needing card draw, 
this gives you that card draw. It doesn't allow you to draw into your uh, remaining spells, but it's just going to fill your hand with minions. Uh, I could also see this being played in Vanar. I think it has decent stats for at 5 mana. Um, I wonder if casting a spell also includes your Bloodborne spell. Because I, I think that would be kind of cool, although it might get out of control. Like, you might just uh, fill your hand really, really fast. Alright, on to the next card. This is going to take a while, I'm realizing, but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and chug through it. I think uh, it's, it's not taking too long per card. I think these are just my initial thoughts, um, and uh, we'll see how they actually flesh out in the game. Anyways, this is uh, Circulus. Circulus is a 2 mana, uh, 1 attack, 3 defense Arcanist for Vanar. Uh, with the text, whenever you cast a spell, add a 2-1 illusion to your action bar. Uh, this is pretty cool. I think I think that this would be probably better played with uh, Kara, allowing her Bloodborne spell to um, pump each of those illusions up to a 3-2, um, just allowing you to kind of spam the board. Mm, right now, the... The fade decks out there do run a lot of spells, and so it might be worth it just to fill your hand, although a lot of 2-1s are not necessarily what you're looking for. Yeah, I think uh, probably probably going to see more action in Kara, but uh, we'll see. Let's see, next we have Death Knell. This is an Abyssian card, 8 mana, uh, 6 attack, 6 defense Arcanist with the opening gamut. Summon all friendly Arcanists destroyed this game nearby. Uh, obviously, this is going to limit you to 8 Arcanists if it is placed on a tile, um, which you're not able actually to do. So it's going to limit it to uh, 2, 5, 6, 7, 7 Arcanists if you're able to uh, chain summon it in a space where there's nothing else around it other than what you're summoning it against. Uh, I think this really depends on how good the other Arcanists who played this game were. If it's a bunch of 2-1 two one, two one illusions, maybe not the best. Um, but this could be obviously a huge swing for you if uh, if you're able to pull out a bunch of you know higher statted Arcanists. It could uh, definitely push the game in your favor towards the end there. I think this is a good card. Uh, yeah, if you're playing like an Arcanist based deck, obviously this is going to be a good card. I think it'll see play. Sorry about that. Had a minor coughing fit. Um, the next card up is a 2 mana uh, artifact for Lionar called Gold Vitriol. Whenever anything is healed, deal 2 damage to a random enemy. Uh, this is a random enemy, not limited to minions, so it can hit the general. Uh, I think this is actually going to see play in both. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, this will see play with Ziran and Argeon. I think there's enough healing in both decks already. Obviously more in heal and R, but there's uh, usually uh, healing mystics and other like Trinity Oaths and stuff being run in Argeon right now that this could definitely find its way in there and do a ton of damage, especially in healing Lionar. I mean, you can just chain heal a bunch of stuff, right? And uh, I'm excited to play this in the healing Lionar deck. Even in Argeon, either way, I think this card is going to be very, very good. It's going to stick around at least for a while until, uh, until there's some kind of answer to it. But yeah, I think this card is going to be very good. Next, we have... Uh, Celebrant. Celebrant, I believe, is, yes, a neutral golem for two mana, one attack, four defense. That is a new stat line that they really seem to like over there at Counterplay. And, uh, usually it's because their opening gambit is very good. Create a mana spring tile nearby. Uh, I said this is Celebrant. Celebrant is neutral, right? This is pretty cool. I actually see this being run in Vanar more than anything else, like a ramp Vanar deck. Uh, use this and Crystal Wisps, and suddenly you're ramped towards the end game a lot quicker than your opponent, especially if you're able to grab the other Mana Spring tiles. It may, this might, like, depending on how good this is deemed by the community, uh, this might just find its way into every single deck. Cre create a Mana Spring tile nearby, yeah. 
it depends. If everybody's using this, then everybody has to use it to try to keep up, right? So, this will wait and see. I mean, the stats are not great, but being able to ramp up really quickly is uh, pretty important. So, we'll see. Next up, we have Cascading Rebirth, a two-mana spell for Magmar. With the text, destroy a friendly minion to summon a random Magmar minion that costs one more. I think uh, this is a really cool, really cool idea. Most of the Magmar minions are at least decent. I don't think there are any terrible ones. I mean, the ones you probably wouldn't want are like, you know, the lower cost ones, so you're probably not going to play this on them anyways. I see you uh, like attacking with a minion, putting it down to like one or two health. Uh, summoning or casting this on that minion to get a new um, higher cost minion that's at full health. This I definitely see getting a lot of play initially seeing how good it is I don't know I'd have to look at what you can pull for each uh, mana level and what the next level up of mana cost would pull you to kind of figure out where it's you know where it's best played maybe like the four five and six mana spot um, the other cool thing that I think you can do with this is like, let's say you play out like a 5 mana, like the Lava Slasher, right? You get it down to like 1 health. You play this, you pull out like a Mechantor, you attack with that. Then your next turn, you play this, and you pull out like a 7 cost. You're just able to like, just keep summoning up minions from the same minion using the spells. I definitely want to play with this one. I think it's kind of a cool tool. Next, we have Sirocco, a 5 mana golem with 4 attack, 3 defense. I believe it's Vitruvian and uh, has the opening gamut. Summon a Skyrock golem on random spaces for each other golem you've summoned this game. Skyrock golem, I believe, is a 2 3 or 3 2. Uh, maybe should have looked that up before this video, but I think, yeah, I think it's either 3 2 or 2 3. Uh, I think that this is not good enough. I think the art is like super cool. I really like the yeah the art style for this minion but I honestly don't think it's good enough. This would be would need to be played late game like five mana. You've only played maybe one or two cards before you've played this if you're playing it on curve. Um, otherwise you're playing it late game and hoping to get you know two to three maybe minions on top of this one. Mm, yeah, I don't think it's good enough. I don't think this is going to see a whole lot of play, unfortunately. Yeah, I could be wrong, but uh, that's that's my initial thought on it. Next up, sorry, I have a little bit of a sniffly nose here. Hopefully that doesn't ruin the video, but uh, we're working with it. Next up, we have a 3-mana golem uh, with 1 attack, 4 defense. Once again, this stat line. Uh, Soul Pontiff, Soul Pontiff, Soul Pontiff. It's a Lionar card. It has zeal. Your golems have plus two attack. I think if you're making a golem deck for Lionar, you're probably going to want to use Argeon, and you probably want to include this card in there. Yeah, basically, as long as you can keep this next to your general, uh, all of your other golems that you're playing have plus two attack, and that is uh, pretty incredible. Yeah, I think uh, I think this card. If you're playing Golem deck, this will definitely make its way in there. All right, next we have Feralu. It's a uh, neutral, I believe. Yep, neutral minion, uh, four mana, four attack, three defense. With the text, friendly minions from any tribe have plus one plus one. This. Like, I'd like to play this in my Kara of Esper deck, I think. Like, it's pretty good. Everything automatically already has plus one, plus one. Then throw on her Bloodborne spell. Gives everything that you summon that turn plus two, plus two, as long as they're Vespers. And or Golems or Arcanists. Um, or I guess Mechs, too. I think those are all the tribes. Battle Pets. Um, yeah, I think this is a cool card. If you need something to fill, just to help buff all your other minions... I guess, uh, I guess this gives your opponent a good dispel target. It also gives, kind of forces them to attack into this first, unless they want to take all those buff stats. 
I don't know. I think it's okay. I think uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to try out. I don't think it's great, but uh, I think it'll be fun. All right. Had a little bit of a coughing fit there again. Hopefully, uh, I'm going to cut out each of the times that that's happened. Um, so if you see a weird cut in the video, that's what happened. I was having a little bit of a coughing fit. I guess uh, I picked up a little bit of a cold here on a vacation I just got back from. Not great, but the vacation was great. The vacation was awesome, but uh, coming back with a little bit of a cold, I think. Anyways, the next card up is a 4 mana Arcanist with 3 attack, 5 defense. This is a Songhai minion, Kindling. Uh, with the text, whenever you cast a spell, your Arcanist's... Sorry, your Arcanist minions gain plus one attack. Once again, I love the art style on this. Um, however, I don't really... I don't really see this getting a whole lot of play. It's got really good stats, I think, for four mana. Um, unfortunately, this is one of those cards that you would want to play it along with a spell the same turn. So you wouldn't want to play it until like four or five... Or sorry, five, six, or like seven mana, and hopefully by that time you have a bunch of arcanists out there already. I don't know. I think uh, this one will definitely get some some use, and then I think it'll be determined it's not good enough. Mm, yeah, that's my that's my initial opinion on it. I think we're only like halfway through here, so let's keep chugging along. Next up, we have an 8 mana, 4, 10 golem for Magmar. Uh, it's called Juggernaut. Let me just scroll down here really quick, sorry. It is called Juggernaut. It has the ability grow plus 5 plus 5. Whenever this minion takes damage, summon that many random golem eggs nearby. This is another, like, your opponent desperately needs a dispel. This is a game ending card. If you're not able to deal with this right away, I, your game is pretty much over. I mean, it's got grow plus five plus five, and anytime it takes damage, it starts off with ten, ten defense. Anytime it takes damage, it's going to summon that many random golem eggs nearby. So then you suddenly have to deal with those. Uh, then you're just going to march this giant army across the board. I am excited to play with this card too. I think Magmar is going to be, I mean so far we're like, I don't know, 17 or 18 cards in here, and I think Magmar is getting some of the more incredible minions so far. Like this and Lava Slash, like I think, uh, man, I can't wait to play, play some Magmar. Magmar Ribbon is probably the next one I'm going to get here. Next up we have the Releaser. It is a 3 mana artifact for Abyssian. Has a text, when this artifact breaks, summon a random, friendly, non-token minion destroyed this game nearby. This has so many qualifiers, it is incredible. Uh, first of all, it's when this artifact breaks, so you get no benefit for the first two um, uses of uh, the dirt ability for this artifact. Then you have to summon a random, friendly, has to be a non-token minion uh, that was destroyed this game already. I don't think that this is... I think the idea is pretty cool. Uh, I think it's not good enough to see play, like, at all. I'd be surprised if... I mean, people might run it just because it's a new card, and then... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say right now, this card is not good enough. I mean, I don't see myself ever playing this card. Alright, next up we have Night Shroud. This is another Abyssian card. This is a 4 mana Arcanist with 5 attack and 1 defense. It has Bond. That is a new keyword in the game. Uh, essentially what Bond is, is since this is an Arcanist, if you summon it and you already have another Arcanist on the board, you get this ability. Same thing with like Golems. If it's a Golem with Bond, if you already have a Golem on the board, then you get the ability from, or you get the benefit from Bond. Anyways, Night Shroud has a bond. Uh, your general steals one health from the enemy general for each other friendly Arcanist. Um, I mean, this could go well with uh, the other minion that generates all the 2-1 illusions. Um, 
I mean, uh, this is definitely, this could have huge swing play potentials, right? If you are able to get a bunch of Arcanists out on the board, and then you're able to play this, I mean, you're going to just deal like a ton of damage to your opponent, and you are going to heal yourself way back up. I mean, it only has one health, and it's pretty obvious why. You're getting, I mean, you have the potential to swing the game way in your direction. Uh, it does have five attack, though, so whatever is going to try to take this out, Unless it's a Blood Tier Alchemist, um, or like a Maw or something, uh, you're gonna probably kill whatever minion your opponent's attacking into it with. This I definitely see people building decks around, and hopefully they're good. It's obviously only gonna be played in Arcanist deck, because otherwise you don't get the bond effect. Um, so, anyways, I think it's cool that they're they're putting cards out that are only going to be able to be played in a tribe themed deck. Alright, on to the next card we have Life Coil, a 3 mana Lionar spell uh, that double a minion's health. This I really only see being played in a Divine Bond deck, otherwise, I mean there's obviously benefits to doubling a minion's health, it's going to stick out on the board for longer. Uh, but for three mana, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, uh, I think uh, this is going to make its way into Divine Bond decks only. Um, and even then, I'm not sure if it's good enough to take up, like, three spots. Definitely not. Maybe only two. Maybe only one. Just gives you another option. I think it's uh, pretty cool. It definitely fits the uh, Lionar theme, or one of them. But uh, I don't think it's like super necessary. You can definitely run a Divine Bond deck without this and do just fine. This just gives you the option to, uh, I mean, definitely like swing the game in one turn. Even if one of your minions is taking a lot of damage, you're able to suddenly uh, double its health and then Divine Bond it and you know attack your opponent's general for a ton of damage. Yep, that's how I feel about that card. The next card we have is Rage Binder, a 3 mana, 3 attack, 4 defense, a golem for Magmar. It has Rebirth and it has Bond, so here's another Bond card. Uh, restore 3 health to your general. Um, this I think has a lot of potential if you are able to keep other golems on the board at the same time as this and have this keep rebirthing. It's just like a non-stop pool of health for your general. Obviously, it's going to be a pretty big target for your opponent. Um, but yeah, I mean, for three mana, a three attack, four defense with rebirth. I think you're going to try to play this on three mana every time and just hope that they're not able to deal with the minion and the egg before you're able to play a golem like the next turn. I think this is definitely going to find its way into any Magmar golem decks. I think it's a good card as far as... Uh, Having like tribe synergy goes. Once again, I think Magmar is kind of sealing the show with with minions this time. Okay, next we have the Calligrapher. I believe this card is a Songhai. Yep, it's a Songhai Arcanist. Uh, seven mana, three attack, seven defense. It has Rush. Whenever this minion attacks, put three Songhai spells into your action bar at end of turn. Yeah, so, I mean, this is another card that is, I mean, it, does, it only has 3 attack, which makes sense, because uh, being able to <laughs> refill your action bar at the end of every turn, I mean, you, you get it guaranteed no matter what, because it's a rush minion, right? Unless your opponent has a way to stop rush, which there's that one minion, Night Watcher. I don't think there's any other way to stop rush. Uh, so you're going to play this, you're going to rush, you're going to attack something, you're going to get three random spells. I think most Songhai spells are useful. Um, so yeah, I definitely see this getting played. Maybe not even in like an Arcanist deck, just some kind of um, end game, higher statted minion that's able to refill your action bar. Maybe only like one in a deck. Um... And even then, maybe it's just too slow. Usually Songhai is, you know, pretty quick. They're usually trying to kill you pretty quick. So this just might be a little too slow for Songhai. Yeah. Alright. Next, we have Ghost, 
Ghost Seraphim, a 7 mana, 8 attack, 9 defense Arcanist for Vanar, uh, with the ability the first spell you cast each turn costs 0. Uh, we've had a couple of them. This is, I mean, I think this is way better than the last card we just saw, which is like a late game card. Um, this one gives you way better stats, 8 and 9, and the first spell you cast each turn costs 0. I mean, this is just like unlimited value, as long as it's able to stay out each turn. Obviously not unlimited, but it gives you some good value. Yeah, I think uh, this <laughs> this is a card that could probably find its way into some, some Vanar decks. I'm excited to try it out. Especially like... Uh, this with like Winter's Wake and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I think that this could be this could be pretty cool. I'm excited to try this card out. All right, Sparrowhawk. Is this the next one? No, I think we skipped one on accident. Here we go, go Seraphim. Here we go. Okay, Thundercloud. This, <laughs> honestly, out of all of the cards that I saw for this expansion, this one got me the most excited, and I. I have no idea why. Like, I like Vitruvian. I'm not very good at playing them. Uh, especially Xerix. For whatever reason, I just can't play Obelisks, like, well to save my life. Uh, I do like playing Saj a lot. And I think that this card could be so much fun with her. Right? So, uh, let me go ahead and explain the card. It is a 4 mana artifact for Vitruvian called Thunderclap. It gives you... Uh, the ability that when your general destroys a minion, summon a copy of it nearby. All I can imagine is putting on Thunderclap and throwing out, like having this out with Grove Lion, right? So you have your Thunderclap on, you have Force Field, you're able to use your Bloodborne spell, which doubles your attack. Yeah, I mean, you're just gonna walk around the board. <laughs> you're gonna walk around the board just stealing all your opponent's minions. They have to first break through your Grove Line, uh, then they have to break through your Thunderclap using ho like only their general, maybe if unless you know their minions have high enough health that attacking into you isn't gonna kill it. Um, yeah, man. Uh, and then there's a three mana card for whatever reason I can't remember what it's called, and I'm feeling like an idiot right now. Uh, let's see here. Falcius. Oh my. Okay, so Falcius. Yeah, you throw this on, then you play Falcius. Um, obviously, it raises your attack and it gives you force field. And you can just steal minions left and right. I think this card is going to be like so much fun for me. I'm real. Like, I really am excited to play with this card. Like, build. I, like, have this on and then put on Spine Cleaver. You're stealing their minions plus. Yeah. I, it's so silly. I think like there's so many better cards than this, but I am so excited to just play a deck, a Saj deck, built around this card. <laughs> Anyways, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just like, this sounds like so much fun to me. Alright, uh, we'll get over my excitement here and move on to the next card. Sparrowhawk. We jumped to them uh, a little bit quick. Um, or preemptively, and now we're actually to it. It is a 3 mana Song High Arcanist with 3 attack, 2 defense. It has Bond. Uh, put a Mist Dragon Seal into your action bar. I think that's that's a really cool Bond. Um, I, th I think this is going to work well with either Kalios or Reva. Yeah, if you're playing an Arcanist deck, usually, I mean, if you're playing an Arcanist deck, you're probably going to play like a Spell High vi variant. Uh, so, Reva might end up working better. Um, but yeah, I could definitely see this getting play. Uh, that's about it. That's that's the extent of my song high knowledge. Next, we have EMP, or EMP, as I'm probably going to end up calling it. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that this wasn't a mech, um, other than the fact that everything in here is either... Uh, just a minion, or Arcanist, or Golem. Uh, anyways, Imp is a 7 minion neutral Golem with 9 attack, 9 defense. Another late game card. This one has the opening gambit, dispel all minions and generals. I think that's pretty important. And destroy all artifacts. Uh, this would 
if I saw this come out when I'm playing that Saj deck I was just explaining, I would cry. Cry every time. Anyways, this is just like a very powerful minion. It is only rare, so it's, I mean, it's going to be relatively easy to get. Uh, I could definitely see a lot of like newer players to the game playing this. I could definitely see this making its way into, um, obviously like a golem deck. The only problem is it dispels everything. Yours, like all of your own stuff. It's got a lot of high stats and it definitely like could swing the advantage towards you if your opponent has a lot of um, like text heavy minions out on the board. But I don't know that the risk is good enough for the reward. Although 9-9 nine nine is pretty big. Maybe you just play this with Lionar, then you double its health, then you Divine Bond. <laughs> so you just, uh, yeah, you hit for like 27 or whatever. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's the way you play this. You play this on turn 7, or on 7 mana, on 8 mana. Can you do that 4 and so Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Maybe that's the way to play this. Isn't a Divine Bond Argeon. You just spell everything else out there. Yeah, maybe that's the way to do it. Alright, let's move on to the next card here. We have Mana Death Grip. This is a 1 mana Vanar spell that deals one damage to an enemy minion. If it dies this turn, permanently gain one mana crystal. It seems like this is a new uh, Vanar theme that obviously they started with Crystal Wisp a long time ago, which is like a ramp Vanar. Um, I'm really excited to see how this goes. I haven't really you know, brainstormed a whole lot into how to make a deck using uh, ramp work. But if you could ramp into like Grandmaster Embla and like yeah, uh, the card we just went over, let's see if I can find it, Ghost Seraphim, like end game cards like that, if you can ramp into them really quick, it might be really hard to deal with. So I'm excited to see how like ramp Vanar works and see if it actually does work and if it's viable. That's about all I can say about this for now until I see it in action. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, next, we are getting near the end here. Thank goodness, my throat is getting raw. <laughs> next, we have a one mana song high spell uh, called Joseki. Uh, I am lucky enough to have Joseki on my friends list. Um, the night that Denizens of Shimzar came out, I don't know if you remember or if you were around, uh, but the servers were having a whole lot of trouble. I happened to get into, I think, two games. The first game. I have no idea what happened. The second game, I was playing against Joseki, and uh, I had seen him in the Discord server. I knew he was a developer. He's he was super nice. I talked to him a whole bunch in chat um, because our game broke. I think um, he destroyed me with an Obelisk deck. But uh, he's a super cool guy. He has his own card now, which is awesome. Uh, what the card does is each player steals a random card from their opponent's deck. I don't know how good this actually is, like, I don't know how useful it's gonna be. I think it's, like, a cool mechanic. Like, especially if this somehow made its way into Magmar, which already has, uh, the ability to steal your opponent's cards. I don't know, I think it's a really fun card. I don't think it's gonna be, like, you know, it's it's gonna be a must-play in all Songhai decks. Alright, next we have Dream Shaper. Dream Shaper, a 2 mana uh, Vitruvian Golem with 2 attack, 2 defense, has bond, draw 2 cards. Uh, I honestly don't think that this card is very good. Like usually when you want to draw 2 cards is towards the end of the game. Usually towards the end of the game you don't want to be playing a 2, a two drop with 2 attack, 2 defense. Uh, I just don't think it's in the right spot. Or like the the stats and uh, or and costs don't match up with the ability to draw two cards. Like you never want to play this turn one. You're just gonna fill your hand and cycle, or uh, I mean you're gonna discard. Maybe you want to play it on three mana. It just seems like, yeah, it seems like you would want it to be higher costed, like maybe three mana. Like I don't I don't know how to make this card work. 
because if you start giving it way better stats then it, it just becomes like a really good card and so that's why it makes sense that it's lower stats but you want to play your lower stat minions early when you don't want to draw cards and so I don't see this being very good I don't see it being played for that reason um, that's my thoughts I think uh, I think that it's I mean it's obviously a cool idea Vitruvian definitely needs card draw I don't think this is the way to do it all right next we have uh, let's see we have Trinity wing uh, Trinity wing is pretty crazy it's a neutral five mana arcanist with four attack four defense has flying and has bond so you have to have another arcanist out there on the field has bond put the three teachings of the dragon into your action bar um, so this is where like at five mana if you're playing like a very aggressive deck you might have room for three cards in your action bar or if you play it on like six mana or something um, four four is I think okay considering it has flying and it refills your hand I think this is gonna be a powerful card uh, let's go through the three what are they called teachings of the dragon the first is the lesson of courage a one mana spell that gives your general plus one attack uh, next up we have the lesson of power a one mana spell that allows you to deal two damage to anything um, obviously that's important in healing Lionar if you can damage one of even your own guys and then heal it back up using your bloodborne spell it can be pretty powerful last we have the lesson of wisdom a one mana restore three health to anything so I don't know if this this might actually end up working out okay in in healing Lionar is it like is that the place to go like have this out there with sudden forge Lancers you're still buffing up your general you're possibly damaging your own guys or your opponents minions uh, does that allow you to damage anything yeah anything so even your your opponents general and that allows you to heal something getting a bunch of healing procs off this card I think has a lot of versatility it's gonna be played in just about everything to see how it fits I think and I think it's gonna be good I honestly think it's gonna be good uh, holy cow I lost track of where I was here we go uh, this is the last card last not last but not least is what I mean to say it is a three mana three attack three defense uh, Vanar Arcanist called Kindred Hunter. Uh, I think the art on this is awesome. <laughs> like running for it reminds me of like anime or like yeah, anime. Somebody running through like a bamboo forest with their blade behind them. Anyways, it has Bond. Uh, summon a 3 3 Night Howler on a random space nearby. Once again, early drop, which already requires you to have another Arcanist out on the board. I don't know if that's great or not. Like, you would have to have played a two mana Arcanist already to play this on curve to get the benefit of Bond. Um, or you're going to be playing it later in the game, which I guess it'll give you 6-6 six, six for three mana as long as you have another Arcanist on the board. This might actually be pretty good. Now I'm thinking about this. Like, Arcanist Kara might become a thing, and this might be in there. And it would probably be pretty good because instead of 6-6 six, six, you get 8-8 eight, eight for 4 mana. As long as you have an Arcanist on the board. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, this could be good. This could be pretty good. Alright, so that is the last card. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. That took way longer than I initially anticipated. Anyways, I am back from vacation. I'm excited to be making more Duelist videos. Uh, I'm excited for the expansion to be coming out later this week and trying a whole bunch of new stuff. So look forward to videos coming out, uh, including the new cards. Uh, I am looking to put out a new Duelist 3x3 video. Um, anyways, thanks for stopping by. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you have not already. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye!